start planning a spring garden. Well, I start planning my spring garden as soon as my previous spring garden is finished because there are always plants that you may want to add. There are plants that maybe didn't do so well for you or you decided you needed to grow too many of to actually get a good sized harvest. So I would begin planning just as soon as you've completed and keep notes. Be sure to keep notes. Um, I also see a question. Um, when do you need to start planting a spring garden? Well, I started mine in January and February inside of hoop houses here in Indiana. And the reason I did that is as soon as that soil in that hoop house warms up enough, those plants will begin growing. And it is possible to have produce as soon as March or April out of your garden, provided you use row covers and you use a tunnel house or some other type of cold frame for protection. You can plant tomatoes March 15th here in Indiana. Again, you need to use a tunnel house or a cold frame and frost cover to keep those alive. Um, and don't be afraid to experiment. Um, a lot of gardeners are real afraid to experiment. And there's no reason to be. You know, put one or two plants out and see what happens. You might be surprised at what you can actually grow if you give it a shot. And if you buy the Complete Idiot's Guide to Year-Round Gardening, which is a great book, it will give you all kinds of pointers on what you can do and when you can start and how to protect these plants. You can even grow, if you're not into vegetables, what about bananas or palm trees in Indiana? It can be done. You need to give them protection. You need to find the right microclimate to grow them in. And a microclimate is an area of your garden that might be a little bit warmer than another area. Sometimes this is up against a protected south wall. Sometimes you might have a little area in your garden that is just isolated and protected by trees or shrubs that is a few degrees warmer than the rest of your garden. Don't be afraid to buy a soil thermometer and check it out. Okay, and I'm just looking for some more questions right now. I see a lot of people are joining us on Facebook, too. I'd like to welcome them. Okay, okay a cold frame is... I should have my book out here. Um, a cold frame is basically an unheated greenhouse on a smaller scale. You can use four bales of straw with a window on top to create a cold frame. You can buy cold frames. You can build your own out of two by twos and cover it with six mil of plastic. Make sure it's sealed at the bottom. Make sure you have a door that you can open to get in or a flap that you can open to get in because you'll need to get in there to tend your plants. And, um, they're just really handy to have. It's a good way to harden off seedlings by putting them in the cold frame and then slowly opening the cold frame so they can get used to the wind and the rain. Really, really wonderful tool to have in the garden. And let's see, looking for some more questions. Tunnel houses can also be considered cold frames, but they're on a larger scale because you can walk into those. And you can heat those, but you don't have to. Um, okay, another question. Um, what are my tips for Midwest gardeners? Well, first of all, don't let our zone scare you off. Don't think, oh, look. We're a zone five, and I really want to grow this zone six or seven plant, but I can't. Give it a try. Sometimes with a woody plant, you can plant that two to three inches deeper. You know, as I said, you can put cold frames over plants that are a zone or two off. 
And they say a greenhouse will raise you at least one zone, maybe two zones, depending on the layers of plastic you have on it. Um, don't forget, wherever you put your cold frame in your winter garden, you're going to have to be able to get water to it. So put it in an area that is convenient to take water to. You can put jugs of water in your cold frame. Hopefully they will stay thawed by midday, but not always. Sometimes they do get icy, um, just depending on how cold the temperature is outside. And when you do your first winter garden, don't go into your cold frame early in the morning because your plants are going to look frozen to you and you're going to let that heat out that is so essential for those plants to have. So wait until 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon when the heat's up and go in there and those plants that were wilted that morning will be up and alive and ready to pick by that afternoon. I would also suggest that Midwest gardeners start with a simple crop such as lettuce for their first winter garden. And I'm just looking here for more questions. Keep sending your questions in. Um, Facebook friends, feel free to send questions in as well. We are recording this, so you will be able to go back and view it later. We're going to try to post this up on YouTube later. We're going to have to split it up because, as some of you know, they only allow people to post 10 minutes worth of video. So this may be in six parts. Okay, another question. Um, how did I get interested in gardening? Well, my grandparents were both gardeners, and my mother was a gardener. And she made me weed the strawberry patch, which was full of spiders. And I do not like spiders. Didn't like them then, don't like them now. Swore I'd never have a garden because I wasn't going to deal with the spiders. So anyway, every year for my birthday, which is in August, she would buy me some flat of discounted flowers that she would come dragging over. Usually they were impatience. And then she would bother me to plant them because I would throw them up against the side of the house and leave them there. And I finally started planting them one year just so she would stop bothering me. And then I got a book on gardening and I discovered herbs. So I went to our local nursery and I bought a plant called Candy Mint. And I brought it home and I planted it. And the book I was reading said that you could put the candy mint in your mop water or your dish water and it would fragrance it and make it more enjoyable to do your housework. So I gave it a try. I cut that plant back so much I ended up killing it. But that was my introduction into herbs. And so I started my first herb garden. And I bought any and every fragrant plant that I could find. First it was herbs, and then it was flowers. If you were sitting in my garden right now, you would smell a mix of honeysuckle and roses, Dame's Rocket, Garden Heliotrope. I love fragrant plants. And then I started getting into the unusual plants. The Amorphophallus, the Erysema, black plants, um, anything that was different. And one of my favorite plants to grow is Theobroma cacao, which is chocolate. I have a whole flat of seedlings going right now. They usually don't stay around long because people find out I have them and they want them. And so I guess that was how I got started in gardening.